And so we're seeing that more and more people don't seem to kind of buy into this. The polls are showing that there is kind of a, a major lapse in the religiosity here in the West uh, and in the United States in particular. I mean, what kind of comes with that? You know, we see people like, I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with Jordan Peterson, not a Christian, but speaks tremendously on the idea that when people lose value in these important institutions and these important truths, these objective matters, they start to find value in these subjective things that create kind of a danger to the society and kind of create a kind of really flawed architecture for the way that we move. Yeah. Uh, I mean, can you just speak to that at all? Yeah, I, I think that um, that's exactly true. Um, I'm not so sure that all of it is negative, when we looked at the change in uh, so-called religiosity of Americans, church attendance, for instance, as is measured, and so, um, you know, we're not losing people who are truly committed. We're losing people who are may identify as a Christian, but they're not really a Christian. Um, and, and so, those are the kind of folks who are falling away. Uh, so, I don't think we're necessarily uh, um, losing people who are committed and, and knowledgeable about the Christian faith. Now, that makes it a challenge for us who want to see people come to faith. Um, how do we reach those people? But um, I don't think it's necessarily unhealthy for people to realize, you know what, I've been kind of playing the Christian game. I'm not really a Christian. Well, that's probably a good realization to come to. Um, great, now let me help you understand what it means to really be a follower of Jesus. So incredibly unique take there. We have heard, like I said, the, the conservative media, the Christian media has been sky is falling on this issue for many years now, at least a decade now, probably more. Um, a very unique take. He said that, you know, the, the decline in relig religiosity is, quote, exactly true, um, but went on to add that it may not all be negative. So I, I, I want to ask you guys, I want to forward to you guys, um, would you agree with that, that it is good that we're seeing essentially um, folks who are lukewarm believers being jarred out of that, and maybe we get a chance to kind of clean slate, bring it back to them again, evangelize them again, and get them truly committed to the faith. I, I do think it's encouraging. It's a great perspective that I had not thought of before. And when you were, we were talking about this before the show, when you were telling me about it, the first thing I thought of was right before the first Great Awakening in uh, in in the states. Um, the church, a generation or two earlier, had passed what they called the halfway covenant. And essentially what it said was, well, if, if you've got a family member who's a member of the church, you can be a member of the church too. That resulted in church roles swelling, but uh, an influx of secularism in, and non-believers in the church. The Great Awakening, all of a sudden, those folks realized, oh gosh, you know, I'm, I'm not a believer. And you, I had a pastor who said... Um, uh, you know, it's the bad news that makes the good news good. You got to get lost before you can get saved. Yep. Mm -hmm. And as folks leave, that does set them up to then realize, oh, well, wait a minute, maybe I did not have this. I can't remember if it's in James or I think First John where he says, um, talking about people like this, he says, they went out from us because they weren't of us. If they had been of us, they wouldn't have gone out from us, but they did. So they weren't. Uh, that is a really encouraging way to think of this. And to the extent that it might parallel the, the, some of the circumstances of the First Great Awakening, that's super encouraging to me. Yeah, and I, I would like to see, you know, right now also with COVID, that could be part of it. You know, people, it's harder to track the membership of the church when someone's watching from home. Yeah. Uh, I frequently watch from home. I go when I'm in town, but if I'm traveling, I go out and watch church. You can't really figure out the whole membership of a church when someone's watching online. So you always have to take that into account as well. However, I do believe, you know, we have seen this steady decline. I do, you know, always see an opportunity for more people to come back mm -hmm. after there um, is a low. We want to go back up on a high. It's just exactly, you know, up and down through life. So I, I definitely believe that we are going to have a point where more people will be coming back to the church.